Good morning, everyone. We have a special morning show today as our guest is coming in from the UK. Um, this is your host, Ariana Sylvester of the Family Entrepreneur Life Live Show. And today I've got a very special guest, Helen Packham. Helen, uh, from an early start as a high performance coach in the corporate space, she experienced some big game changers in her life after her first child and then again after her second. Her business stalled, her marriage started faltering, so she decided to take charge and go on a journey of self-discovery. And her story is one of transformation. So I'm so excited to bring Helen on and to, to have her share some of her wisdom with a lot of our viewers because I know that you guys, like myself, have probably gone through some of this stuff or maybe are going through it right now. So Helen, why don't you kind of give every, fill us in a little bit on your story, what's your family dynamic, and um, how did you get where you are today? Oh, firstly, thank you so much for having me on. It's an absolute honor to be here. And hello to anybody that's watching. So, um, so yeah, I mean, how did I get here? Um, I never, first of all, I think I never expected to be here at all. <laughs> um, um, it's just been a bit of a roller coaster ride these last few years. But as you mentioned, my background is very much in corporate leadership development and executive coaching. That was what I did for 15 years. Um, it's kind of all I knew straight out of college. And um, I really did love it. I, I enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed kind of working and communicating with people, helping them engage their people. Um, and I really enjoyed being a coach. Um, and, and sort of climbed the corporate ladder and got to quite a senior position um, before, I, before I had kids. And then in 2012, I had my daughter. And, well, it just completely <laughs> knocked me for six <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, I parenthood turned out to be something completely different than I predicted. And I am the type of personality where I like to uh, plan and um, <laughs> yeah, I like to kind of know what's coming. Um, and so therefore I thought I had prepared uh, for that before my daughter came along. And, and because it was so different than my expectation, it, it completely knocked me for six. And um, she did have various health issues, nothing too serious, but she did have health issues that really didn't impact her, her general happiness, um, her sleep. Oh, um, and so uh, she couldn't, you know, she just couldn't sleep. And she had undiagnosed reflux disease and cow's milk oh. allergy. So it took a year to get her diagnosed. And in that time, I did uh, become, you know, very anxious. I got diagnosed with postnatal anxiety disorder. But everything just completely shifted. And because I wasn't prepared for that, I then kind of didn't know who I'd become. So I felt very lost um, because I was this high flying career girl. You know, I, I, that was what I was good at. Then all of a sudden I wasn't good at anything because I couldn't help my daughter. Um, and so it felt like I became untethered, you know, sort mm. of floating around. Um, and a lot of things happened as a result of that. Um, the return to work was very difficult. So I took a year out. The return to work was difficult because I felt so unconfident. I felt like I, I couldn't do this job anymore. I didn't know who I was, what role I was playing. And that really did show in my performance. I, know I thought I was rubbish, so therefore I behaved in that way. And then my, my boss saw that and treated me in that way. And it all came to a head uh, and I left. Uh, and I, you know, I literally kind of walked out of the building and I left, <laughs> um, I left and I kind of ran away from it all. Mm. And that led me to start my first business. And I was very passionate about, uh, children and helping, um, parents because of my own story. And so I retrained as a child sleep consultant under Ooh. Kim West. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's very big in the U S. Um, and became a child sleep consultant. But it just never felt mm. right. I still didn't know who I was. I was very, very self-conscious. I was, I was very anxious. And I, it was actually very good because it was an online business. But I just hid away from everybody. Mm. I, I, I thought that was perfect for me. I didn't see anybody. I didn't see my friends. Um, and I became a shell. And this was not good. This was not good yeah. for me. It wasn't good <laughs> for my relationship. It wasn't good for me as, um, as a parent. But we decided to have another child. And when my son arrived, things just went from bad to worse. Um, you know, I love my son to bits. Of course, I love my daughter to bits. But 
he also had health issues and everything compounded and, and my marriage ended up falling apart just a few weeks after he, he, had, he was born. And it made, it actually was the wake up call I needed because up until then, because I didn't know who I was and I had no sense of self whatsoever, I'd been avoiding it all and kind of like, you know, pressing the easy buttons, binging out on Netflix, eating lots of cake, you know, doing all those things that are really easy to do to avoid my marriage problems and yeah. my parenting. And so I decided that I had to kind of go on the journey to, to sort it all out. And I did. And it was a quite a challenging journey. But in, in that time, I have been able to unlock the confidence that I had before, rediscover who I am, and gone on to launch the business that I have now, which is completely aligned with all of the skills and experience I had back then. Um, so now I'm, you know, helping women and men, some men, but mostly women. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> all, over the world, to hear that. <laughs> all over the world um, to really kind of stand out using their skills and expertise in ways that are maybe a little bit more different than the usual Facebook marketing or things like that. And it's, you know, through things like public speaking, sharing ideas with courage, standing out um, in the press and the media and really connecting with influencers to make your mark. And so that's the kind of main premise of what I do now. And I'm absolutely loving it. And, you know, the biggest thing that happened to me was I went from kind of hiding in a hole to then thinking, right, how, what is the biggest goal I can set myself that can prove that I never lost it? And so I put on my vision board at the beginning of last year, a TED sign, and I managed to achieve that goal in October last year, stood on a stage in front of 1,500 people and shared my ordinary tale. That's awesome. And I just watched that actually a little bit before the show. And um, it was just, I, I connected with it so much because I was very similar to you with having a child that kind of wasn't what we expected. And I came out of that not knowing who I was and kind of feeling lost and losing myself a little bit. And um, I know that there's so many people out there that experience this every day. Mm -hmm. And just having you up there sharing your story, I think is so powerful for those, for those of us that, you know, can then go and watch that and say, okay, well, she went through what I'm going through and, and she's now doing this. Mm -hmm. I can, I can do that too, you know, and it gives exactly. us that, that little bit of pick me up that we needed to kind of step out of that comfort zone and say, I'm going to change things because I don't like where they are. Yeah, absolutely. And that was my goal really. When I did the talk, I wasn't thinking of anything else other than if I can help one other person, but just being vulnerable and kind of sharing it, then, then, then I feel like I've achieved something. And yeah. The feedback that, you know, from all sorts of different people, people that I've never would have thought, you know, men, women, people that don't have kids contacting me and saying, thank you. Thank you for sharing that um, has been wonderful. So I feel like, you know, I did I did achieve. But then other things that have gone on since then that I never expected to have mm. been just incredible in terms of my business. So um, that's been an unexpected direction. Well, and I love that you say you're um, you're teaching people to stand out, but in different ways because mm. I think that's one of the detriments of all of us that kind of get into the online space and we see everyone else is doing this so I should be doing this and I need to follow the trends and follow the crowd but it's so powerful to kind of step out of that space and do things a little differently and to get in front of people in a different way and I we hadn't really experienced that a ton but we just spoke at a live event uh, about oh. two weeks ago and just the you just feel like so so differently when you're you're in front of real people talking and and sharing your own stories and your own experiences and then to have people come up after you and say hey like I loved that part where you talked about this that was so me I love what you taught us it's just so you know real life applicable and something about that that public speaking or getting out in front of people in a different way is just so powerful both for them and then also for you from the confidence aspect and okay. from kind of like knowing how you show up and where you show up so I, I i am right on board with you and that's actually something that's on our vision board is to get 
more public speaking gigs and, you know, to really get out there, maybe even a book sometime soon. So, you know, it's definitely something I think is important for everyone to kind of just think about, you know, it's not for everybody, but if you can get out in front of your people in a different way, um, you know, you're going to spark a little bit of something. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be standing on a stage. It can be doing a live stream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the skill that you have with public speaking is so transferable. And ultimately, it's a skill where we are creating human connection. We're creating connection with other human beings. And that's why it's so powerful, because for 40,000 years, we have been telling stories to each other to create a sense of shared meaning. Yeah. And you know, we didn't know what that burning orange ball was in the sky way back then. And so stories helped us connect. And that's why it's so ingrained in us. That's why it's so powerful. So whether you're sharing a story on a one-on-one -on -one coaching session or um, through a live stream, a webinar, a book, um, or standing on stage, it has real power in it. You know, storytelling mm. is at the heart of it. But ultimately, if you have an idea or a message or you feel passionately about something, that's something that other people need to hear. And that's something that can make you stand out. That's what I feel so passionately about it. I've got this sort of saying, I really do feel that everybody has a Ted Worthy talk inside them. And it's just about bringing it out. I love um, that. So I have a question because I know that there's probably a lot of people watching that are like, oh, well, that's all well and great. But I don't really know how to find my story or... Mm -hmm. Maybe I know my story, but I'm not sure, you know, which pieces are important to share or how to how to pull it out of myself in a way that makes sense. What are some of the like first steps someone can take to start crafting their story to get ready to share it with people? Mm, great, great question. So, I mean, <clears throat> so with anything I do, it's kind of where I start with people. Because if you're unclear on kind of your business direction or your ideal client or, you know, whatever it might be, you start with the story. Mm -hmm. um, before that, you kind of get clear on your kind of like the values and things that you represent. But then after that, you connect with your story. And the thing, the myth that I want to bust here is that you don't have to have a story of great tragedy. You don't have to have experienced hardship to have a story. There's so many ways that you can tell a story. And there, you know, just a few of them are, for example, you know, the one that I use in my TED talk, which is the hero's journey, which is, you know, I started here, this happened, there was a turning point, and then these are the lessons I've learned. That's, you know, a very classic way to tell a story, but not everybody fits with that. Yeah. And I get a lot of people saying to me, yes, but I just don't, I don't want to share my story. I don't, I don't feel like I have experienced, I have actually experienced some, some rubbish in my life, but I don't really feel it's relevant. And Mm. That is really important. The thing is, is we're not telling a story for catharsis. We're telling a story for the purpose. And the good thing about it is it's not your story. It's the person that you're telling it to that's really important. So whether you have experienced hardship or not, it doesn't matter. The thing is, is what what do I want? What message do I have for the people that I want to connect with? And how can I use my story or other stories to actually tell that? So it could be, for example, that there is an element of your work experience in the past that has led you to where you are and there's some lessons that you learn. That's really important to, yeah. you know, to use. That's really, really great for people to see that you're the expert, um, to, to see you as an authority, um, to find out more about you. And then there may be a personal experience that you were inspired by or something happened to you or a family member that really inspired you to think differently about something. It doesn't have to be something really hard. It could be something that you just thought one day, wow, I really connect with what that person's saying and I'm going to do something with that. Mm -hmm. Or we can kind of collect little stories from things like research and data and surveys and you know case studies and other people's stories and present them. And mm. that can give us um, a story that can be shared. But ultimately, it's about thinking about the audience and not about you. And that will really help you steer the purpose of the story. Because um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want it to be about me. And it doesn't have to be about you. Because you're always going to leave them with a message or a lesson. Hopefully that. That's very helpful. And actually, I just wanted to comment. I think that what you said right there is when my 
mindset started to shift a little bit about telling our story because when we um when we first got into the online space we were under a different business name and we started with a blog and i remember telling tom all the time or asking him like why do why do you want me to write like who who wants to hear from me i don't have anything important to share like i don't even know what to write about like what do you think people would want to hear about from me and he would keep telling me life you know just just talk about what you're going through and what you've experienced so far and you don't understand there are people out there that want to hear what you have to say and i would keep saying no 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 but whatever you say i'll write the blogs because you you want me to do that and you know that can kind of continued up through when we rebranded and went through and had a podcast and all these different things and i remember still thinking like I never really know what to say because I don't feel like I have anything to contribute. And I was stuck on that, that I have to give value. And for some reason in my head, I had that preconceived notion of what value looked like. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, and I don't even remember the, the exact turning point, but at some point in time, maybe it was something someone said, or I shared something vulnerable and it like got a huge response. It clicked to me that I, sharing what I've gone through and my perspective on things and my side of the story, because there is two of us with Tom and I being in the business together connects with different people and is a different important piece of the story. You know, he's got his story. I have my own and then we have ours together. And I remember him saying like, you can't think in your head what other people it's other people decide what's valuable not you they're the ones listening to you and I was like oh that Absolutely. makes a lot of sense <laughs> yeah. so once I came to terms with that in my head it made me worry less about you know sharing my story out and saying like okay well even if only one person walks away thinking like oh that's amazing I just helped one person by sharing that little piece of my story and you know that feels good inside. Yes. So that, I just wanted to point that out, that that piece of advice right there is just, is huge. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I, I get a lot of people saying that um, to me as well in terms of, oh, I don't have anything big enough to say. I don't have a story that's big enough or interesting enough. And the beautiful thing, again, about the storytelling is that it is unique to you. Nobody has your experience. Nobody has your combination of life experience, work experience, passions, personality, mm -hmm. stories. <laughs> and so putting those all together makes a really unique combination that nobody yeah. else has. And a lot of ideas out there, a lot of the best TED Talks aren't necessarily brand new ideas. Yeah, They are a, a, an idea taken and looked at in a different way, repackaged with the uniqueness of the storyteller. And yes. that's what makes something unique. And that's what makes you know, anybody have something worth saying. Um, yeah. and, and Chris Anderson, the head, the curator at TED, encourages everybody to, to do it um, and to use it in their everyday lives. Yeah, and you, you hit upon another good point there, personality, so important. You know, I, we never really showed our real personality um, in our business, on the business side of things, like we did a little bit when we had a podcast together that we would kind of go back and forth and people would always say, oh, you guys are hilarious. I love listening to you banter. But for some reason, we never infused the rest of our business with our own personalities. Mm -hmm. And someone said that like, well, when I hear you guys talk on your podcast, it's so different from like when you have blog posts or when you post in the group because you just sound very professional and, mm. you know, there's nothing of you in there. And I was like, oh, that's that's a great point. I guess we were kind of thinking we had to fit into a certain mold, you know, for people to think we were the real deal and, and, and knew what we were talking about. And, and that's just not true. I think people feel even more connected to you and they want to listen to you even more when you have important things to say if you are saying it from your personality and your perspective and it's it's more fun you know people connect with your personality and so that's how it's it's i've found that it's a lot easier to pull those ideal clients toward us and then kind of like let the others who aren't really ideal just slip away and, and go somewhere else because they're either connecting with our silly personality or they're not <laughs> exactly it's so it's so so important you know i call it kind of like the fourth wall you know in uh, in the theater terms when people was performing 
in like hundreds of years ago, there was always a fourth wall. And it's like, you know, when we're in our professional mode, we have this fourth wall, but this invisible fourth wall, but we need to kind of like take that away. And, um, and it's very, it's not easy. It's not easy to do that, particularly if you're kind of used to being professional and you think that that's what people want and need. And it's not like, you know, you're just going to go completely, um, the other way. It's just that, that people really connect with that don't they they really really connect whether you're again doing a live stream or a post or a blog or a webinar or whatever it is um that connection people feel it yeah i think it's you know and i think part of that just comes from the a little bit of that is fear i think at mm. least it was for me with the the fear of rejection so you know everyone is so quick to judge in the online space and it's so easy to like type things about people from behind a screen so when you put yourself out there online a little bit of that is fear of okay well if i act a certain way maybe people won't post and you know say mean things about me because if you put your personality out there and if you're a silly person and you get goofy and you know you you get vulnerable mm -hmm. that opens you up to people being like oh well that was just stupid i don't i don't like what you do and you've got to deal with that so i think yes. it's it's staying in that safe zone a little bit when you don't open up and, and put your personality out there and when you don't um, get vulnerable and open yourself up to sharing those deeper experiences. And uh, that's that's a, a mindset, you know, a fear that people just have to kind of push and, and say, I'm going to do it anyways. And if something happens, something happens and I'll deal with it. But I need to do this. Yeah, it's a it's a big visibility blocker. You know, it, it was for me um, mm -hmm. and, you know, for a lot of people that I, I work with. Um, and, you know, the sort of things that it comes back to is kind of staying in your lane and thinking of the um, the bigger purpose of what you're doing. And with that, the thing that helped me was thinking the message that I have is bigger than me. And so I'm not going to let myself get in the way of delivering it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we all have it. I've experienced negative feedback. Um, we all have, haven't we? You know, uh, friends family that haven't agreed with what I'm doing, um, friends in particular who have fallen away, unfortunately, um, negative feedback online, messages, things like that. And I guess it's just about thinking, well, if I'm helping that's one person or a couple of people, I'm helping more people than I'm not. And and it's it's a big it's bigger than me. So therefore it's almost like you have a duty to share it because it's bigger than that kind of drive. That's the thing that drove me forward. I was like, right, come on, Helen, just get out there. Yeah. Because when I was doing Facebook Lives on my business page on Facebook, I remember I had this big blocker about that because I was in my group and that was safe, but I wasn't doing Facebook Lives on my business page and I, and I had to get past that hurdle. I think lots of people experience the same sort of thing. Yeah, I did. I still do um, sometimes. Mm, I have yeah. to remember, like, oh. I said I was going to go live, so I need to just go live and not think about it, you know? Yeah. But I think it's just, it's something that it doesn't really ever go away. Mm. You, you just get more used to stepping past it and doing things anyways. You know, I mean, we, we all have those little little fears that are still kind of in the background. Oh, yes. And then, um, you know, I, I, and someone was talking about it, I think a week or two ago, just like when you up level in your business, it all comes back and you're experiencing yeah. all of these fears. You're like, Oh, I thought I got rid of all these, but they come back and you just have to continually push yourself. And, you know, remember that, that it's a duty to share your message with the people that need to hear it. Um, so anyone who's listening, if you think you don't have a story, Helen just gave you lots of reasons that you do. <laughs> <laughs> And she also just, you know, kind of threw you out there and said, you have a duty to share your message. So I want you all to be remembering that and thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Helen, before I let you go, what is uh, one piece of advice or a lesson learned that you have had along your journey that you'd like to share with us today? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about kind of like the beginning of my journey, this journey that I've been on. And there's a quote that really resonates with me and it's in order to go on the journey, you have to believe that you're worthy of the trip. And when I think about that, 
and I think about you know how that's helped me along the way um, I really think that it's a really great place to get super solid on so what I mean by that is the whole all of the belief systems that you you have if they are sabotaging you and tripping you up then it's really really good to, to go and look at those in depth it's what I did I went through relationship counseling at the beginning and I went through this in detail and it was taking my current beliefs and kind of flipping them mm. to ones that served me and that has really stood me in good stead and as you mentioned it never goes away the gremlins will always appear on your shoulder but I have tools and ways of quietening that critical voice now whereas before it would have I wouldn't even got out the starting blocks it just wouldn't mm. have happened I wouldn't have even started out on this journey and and every step every challenging step along the way i've gone back to that and um and so believing that you're worthy of the trip is is i guess my biggest piece of advice because you are worthy of the trip but you've got to believe that yeah it's so powerful and i feel like you know that's that's one of those quotes you put you post up on your wall next to your computer so that you see it every single day and you remind yourself that you are worthy of this journey that you're on i love mm -hmm. that uh, you have a freebie that you brought along with you um, called Unlock Your Inner Leader. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. We will link to that in the comments for anyone who's watching or catching the replay. And um, Helen, where can everyone find you if they want to follow you or, you know, reach out to you for some, some help? Mm. So the place that I hang out the most is my Facebook group, which is called the Courageous Leaders Club, uh, where I really encourage people to stand up, to stand out, uh, and to get co courageous in sharing their messages. So that's what the group's all about, and uh, it's a very warm and supportive environment you get for people to be able to do that. I kind of hang out there every day. So. <laughs> They're fun, right? Yeah. So we will also link to that below in the comments for anyone who wants to go and join Helen's group, which you totally should. Um, and I, it was just such a great show. Thank, thank you for coming on, Helen. You brought so much wisdom with you and, and drop so many value bombs. Um, I think people are going to really, really enjoy this show today. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here. All right. So for anyone watching the replay, check the comments below. We'll post up those links. Um, if you are watching and you haven't yet joined our community for family focused entrepreneurs you can find us at the family entrepreneur life.com and um, we've got some more shows coming next week I'm really excited we've got a full month of October so far so Helen thank you again for coming on and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day